So remember video 1464 and we made this thing, which was based on a 1890 design. Uh, I love this actually, because it's kind of my habit. Have a look at what other people are doing or what's gone before, do a basic concept, have a chat with you guys and then build on that concept. And of course, some awesome suggestions, hey? There was one guy said, well, that looks like a dead end to me. And I thought, yeah, well, to you, that will be. And another guy gave another really good idea because remember, we were hitting it here tangentially. And of course, it's a lever and the torque matters. And he said, what about if you hit it on the edge? And I thought, yeah, that's good thinking. So to test the idea, I've got this. I don't know if you remember these. These are trolley wheels covered in timing belt from a car to make gears. But of course, what we've got is an edge with tiny little blades. 1464 we made this all it is is a bit of copper pipe with the 1.5 millimeter hole in it and a bit of 1.5 millimeter pipe that i've crushed at the end to make a flat stream so we made that in 14 1465 and used it in that video and i'm about to use it now so let's give it a go <laughs> oh yeah that worked i can see one problem <laughs> I'm getting drenched. So I need to do something about a protective cover, but that works really well. So let's build something out of that. So I'm gonna refer you to two videos. One is because of this, and the other is because of this. Now this was done in video 1448. I quite like breaking up the videos, not to irritate you, because if I didn't, every video would be an hour long and most of it would be repetition. So just pointing up the other videos means we can bring those things into whatever project we happen to be working on. So we made this flywheel in 1448, and we used these things in um, how to make the world's largest cogs. Uh, that was before I started numbering the videos. But basically, you slice the belt up and you get a whole lot of teeth. If we wrap those teeth around our flywheel, there we go, like that, we get a big cog, we can spray the water jet down. So I'm going to wrap that on the flywheel and get it mounted. There's a flywheel with the tooth belt on it. Now that glue is super glue and it's meant to be hard wearing so it should be able to take this. We did make this out of plywood so if you're going to enclose it obviously you're going to need to varnish it. And I quickly knocked up this box. Now it's a pretty simple box but a couple of things to notice. At the bottom there's a drain hole and you'll see three holes here. These are actually vent holes because there is a chance of it forming a negative pressure and that's to help it vent if it does that. Now we're missing one hole and that's the hole for the jet. So we drill a three millimeter hole and put the jet in through there. Then we can put the whole thing together and spin it up and see if it actually works. That's actually kind of exciting. There it is all together. Now this is the basic uh, wheel. I haven't attached a generator to it yet because I'm going to give it a go. But I tell you, it spins with some speed. Hey Luke, would you mind doing me a favour, mate? Of course, mate. Would you turn the water on and, yeah. and we'll watch this spin? Some speed. Turn it off, man. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so the water's off. Because it's a flywheel, of course it's continuing to run. It's going to run for quite a while actually. So the next thing we need to do is stick a generator on here. Okay, we've attached the generator and if I'm very nice to Luke, he'll turn on the water. Got the meter, got an LED light to light up. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we're getting about 0.3 of an amp. Let's have a look at the volts. There you go, about 10 volts. So it's about three watts. So three watts might not sound like a lot to you. And I suppose in a sense it isn't. But what you're looking at is what went in to what we got out. Now I did a flow rate test on this and in about uh, two minutes we got a litre. Given that the little tube we put in there is 1.5 millimetres in diameter, and it's about five centimetres away from the wheel, we're talking about a milligram of water per second being chucked at that wheel. Now that doesn't sound like a lot to me. 
So we're getting a lot of energy out, I think, for the energy we put in. If I can find the pressure on the mains, I will do an efficiency calculation so we get some idea of what the efficiency is. But really simple to make, and, and that's the key thing I think here, is that this can actually be made simply. I mean, a Pelton wheel is supposed to get sort of 90, 95% efficiencies, which is really cool, and yeah, I'd love to build a Pelton wheel. But building something like this is something that I think everybody can build and still get pretty good results out of it. Anyway, there we are with the water motor at the moment. It's actually beginning to look a bit like its um, 19th century cousins. I hope you're enjoying the video series so far. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.